I've sprayed 31,000 acres in two years and no one has told me this. So today, I'm gonna give you the exact facts that you need to pursue your drone business. I'm going to let you know on what's going on today in the drone market and basically tell you how it is. Is that what you want before you jump headfirst into a business? Absolutely. I wish I would have had somebody that would tell me exactly what I'm gonna tell you today when I first started this business. So stay tuned, welcome to Harvest Company. Let's dive deep, baby. Welcome back to Harvest Company, guys. If you haven't already, hit that like, hit that subscribe. We're growing each and every day up to almost 12,000 subscribers. Thank you again to the ones that are currently paying attention to what I've got to say. Now, come on, people. I've got a list of things that I'm going to kind of go over today. Um, <clears throat> and the first thing I'm going to talk about when it's jumping into a new business is your drones, right? Obviously. That's why you're here. That's why you're watching. And that's why you're going to get continue to watch. New drones, why? Why should I buy a new drone? Guys, I'm running two T40s, okay? The internal brain on those T40s are slowly dying, right? They do stuff every day that's just like, why? But here's what I've learned about the new drones, and I study them just about every day, not as a scientist, but just as a, uh, a guy who, who's been in the shit. And I'm going to kind of break that down. Um, P150 XAG, unbelievable drone, right? Built like a tank, Software system, can't figure it out. No one's got it figured out. I have dealers that contact me once a week. Hey, we've got it. We've got it close. We're close. Yeah, 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 yeah. Buy. You need to buy. You need to buy. No, I'm not buying. I'm not buying that. I'm just not buying it. I've heard so many disaster stories. I know personally, you know, for me, I didn't wreck a drone until 29,000 acres. And these things are just falling, one, out of the sky, and two... You know, XAG is not apparently holding up to their side of the bargain on the warranty. People have had good luck. Some people have had bad luck. I don't want to be a part of that. I don't want to go invest forty-five to forty-eight thousand dollars into a drone, and then within the first five thousand acres, I've wrecked it three times because there's connection issues. How do we not have good connection? Why is DJI the only one that can manage to have good connection? Right? If I'm flying a drone twenty-eight hundred feet to the back of a field that's got a pivot on it, and I need to go up and over that pivot, and I lose connection, and it flies into the dadgum pivot or the tree or whatever the case may be, well, I'm shit out of luck. I don't got time for shit luck because. I can't put myself into a good position because the drone industry is not where it needs to be, okay? I'm not here to shit on a drone. I think the XAG P150 is the toughest drone built. Built like a freaking case tractor, which is apparently they're in cahoots. But the J100, no comment. I think it's a great built drone. I think they have good aspirations behind it. I think, I think AgriSpray drone is incredible. Right? I think they do great stuff. I know people personally there. They're great. Great people. Right? They work their tail off. But I don't think their drone's it. I've seen the J150. I hope you got some cannons to lift a 40-pound battery up all day long. Okay? Anyways, I'm done. I'm all off my soapbox. I don't know anything about, about any of the other drones. Um, oh, the T60X. Yeah. Um, let's talk about that real quick. T60X. I think it's a good drone. I think it's built well. Um, I think uh, the software on it's just like a DJI. Obviously, those guys are pretty much from DJI. But there's who's going to fix them, right? Do you know everything about you buy a brand new T60X? Do you know how to work on it? Nah, eh, maybe a little bit. But if not, you're going to have to probably box it back up and ship it back to Riverside, California, in order for them to fix it and send it back. So you're looking at about six to eight weeks. Great job, great investment. So here's our next thing. De uh, like the depreciation of these things. If you go buy one tomorrow, you unbox it. As soon as you pull that dadgum razor blade out to pop that tape, guess what? 15, 20 G's gone. So you better start making up your money quickly. Um, yeah, so that's why I'm so skeptical. Like I don't want to buy anything else. Like why, why do I go buy? Why do I go buy right now? My T40s, 
they're losing their brains, yes, but they're still working to some, you know, they're, they're working of some sort. Um, let's talk about your background, right? If you're getting into this business, do you have a background? Do you have an agricultural background? Maybe. I don't know. I talk about mixing Kool-Aid all the time. Can you go into your kitchen and mix a good pitcher of Kool-Aid? Because if you can't, you can't mix chemical, bud. It's just not going to happen. You're going to have to learn, right? Which is good. Anybody can learn. But I'm just going to tell you right now, I've had an agricultural background my whole entire life, right? Family's farmed for generations, okay? Ranched for generations. So I've mixed chemicals since I was a kid. But here's the thing. There's a difference between mixing chemical, that's just regular 2,4-D roundup that's easy, versus being able to speak to a chemical rep that's going to oversell you eight different chemicals, right, for a farmer that they work for, and realize that you can't spray eight different chemicals at two gallons per acre. It's impossible. So what I think is happening to this industry is that a bunch of guys, not necessarily grown men, but people in their 20s, right, that are which was me. Hey, I'm 30, but I was 20 when I started this, 20, 28 when I started this business. But I had an agricultural background. But a lot of cats are getting into this and they do not understand any of it. So they get a job. They go talk to Jim Bob down the road that's got 600 acres of corn and they spray fungicide on it and they have no idea what they're doing and they mix it completely wrong and they screw everything up, right? Well, guess what? That farmer has completely lost all hope of drones. So whenever my experience business comes in and says, hey, I need a drone, or vice versa, hey, I'm not using your drones. I've already seen what that can do, and it's terrible. So you guys out there that are spraying, and you dealers out there that are pushing drones, you better be working with your guys in order to be good, good, good pilots, because if not, you are running this whole entire train right into the ground. So make sure you know that that Kool-Aid better taste good before you put any chemical in that tank. Let's talk about why we should buy cash and not finance. Um, I know cats that have gotten into this that are sixty to eighty to $100,000 deep and they don't know what they're doing. Therefore, they fail. Therefore, they go under. Therefore, they don't have the money to pay off their loan. I bought everything cash to start off. I used a gooseneck that was here at the farm to pull everything. Use a freaking bed of your truck. Put a tote in the bed of your truck. Put a pump, pump in your generator in the bed of your truck. Do, do whatever you got to do to make ends meet before you go and finance a $30,000 trailer. And listen, if you're paying $35,000 for that new way ag trailer, you're an absolute clown. If you have it, you're a clown, right? I paid fourteen five dollars for my trailer that I had custom built. Not going to mention any names, but come on. And it's way sturdier. Have you ever been on the top of a new AAG trailer? Yeah. It's like going off the top of the Texas Giant down in Dallas at Six Flags. Good luck. Hope it works for you. So, you guys that are watching not only this video, but other videos about how, you know, we're spraying 65, 70 acres in a day. Come on, guys. Come on. Like, if there's 200-acre fields and you do three of those in a day and that drone's up and moving and you it's super, super efficient, hey, good. But it is, this ain't an air tractor. You're not just going to fly this drone whoom, and then go to the next field. You're going to pick up, pack up, turn everything off, rock and roll, drive to your next field, go get chemical if you got go to if you got to go get chemical. Like... Your days are very, very, very long. Like we, when we spray, it's sun up to sun down. If not, you ain't making any money. Okay. So financing for me is it's it's not smart because if you go and finance a forty eight thousand dollar drone and then you crash it within the first one hundred to five hundred acres, and then they don't issue the warranty or the warranty is like six to eight weeks out, and you got to go pay ten G's to fix this drone because the parts are getting expensive. Then what are you going to do, bud? You're going to pack it up and you're going to sell. So pay attention. No, no freaking stack cash before you get into this. This is not this is not easy. You can't just hop out and just go get jobs, right? 
I was fortunate enough to know a lot of farmers and know that I had to put in a lot of hard work in order to make ends meet. Do not spray herbicide at 28.5 feet. Spray it at 20. Spray it at 21. And don't go over it. And don't spray if the wind's howling. Over 7, shut it down. Why? Because it's going to cost you money every single time. Every single time. So be smart. Don't screw yourself. What drone companies should improve? Um, all of them. We, uh, we want more, quicker, better, faster, stronger, bigger tanks. Right, but, but with bigger tanks come bigger batteries. Um, that's what makes this industry so hard is the amount of work you have to put in just to reach those daily goals. Um, we're, we're in a world now where I've been told like in China, you know, which is a very hot topic, obviously, with the uh, new bill that's possibly going to be passed. I don't know much about the bill. I stay away from the, the politics side of things, and I should probably dive deeper into that and do more research. But I'm probably not going to be doing this much longer, solely for the fact that I just know that I can go put $48,000 into something that's probably going to be more long-term. Credit, I could get my money back a lot quicker because I already have a big business built. But it's just – anyways. But guys – the, the the drones in China are phenomenal. Like, they're doing... They got 50-gallon tanks on them. How? I don't know. I've never seen it. But they're doing it. And why can't we do that here in America? We're America, right? We're America. The USA. But the difference between us and China is that they have millions and millions and millions of people. And they pay very little for them to build these drones. Where here in America, we've got to build them for a lot more. So that's where, I got, where we're going to see the big jump. If the people of America will build a drone, what is that drone going to cost? Well, it's probably going to be pretty steep, 60, 100, somewhere around that ballpark. So is it going to be worth it? I don't know. So here's my question to you. What are you going to do different? What are you going to do next? What drone are you going to buy? Drop that in the comments, guys. And thanks again. If you've made it through this dadgum video, bless you. So... Hit that like, hit that subscribe. Let's grow this channel. I cannot do it without you. I love doing this. I love spreading knowledge. It's a great thing. So, once again, thank you guys. Keep rocking. Keep rolling. And if you have any questions, hit me up, guys. Find that email. It's on my page. Harvest Company. Shoot me an email and uh, let's chat. Before you jump in headfirst into this business, I will let you know exactly what to do. So, come on. We'll see you next time. Thanks.